As an introduction, well, we can consider what is uh, informal learning. Maybe if I ask you what is informal learning, any of you have a, their own opinion. Uh, there are some features that are more or less uh, common, such as that uh, it used to be unintentional, it used to uh, happen outside the institution, uh, along the lines in what is known as lifelong learning. And um, in a community, it's probably something play. It's not something that happens here during the class, it's something that happens in our daily life. Okay? So the problem we have here is how to measure that. How to know what a person is doing outside. Uh, I think it's uh, normal to think that if the learner by himself or herself is not uh, conscious of his or, uh, or his learning, we have a problem. We can measure it. We can recognize it. But uh, maybe we'll, what we, we should do is to provide ways in which the learners can be conscious about what is happening and also uh, in which they can be, they can uh, publish that kind of information to the institution in which they are involved. Okay? Uh, why to consider informal learning? Well, I think that all of you know Bologna process. In Bologna process, one of the things that is considering as most important is lifelong learning. And lifelong learning is not only learning in the institution, so we have to take it into account. Also, because it improves employability. And that's very important. If, you, the, if your boss now, okay, I have this, uh, you have this kind of um, competencies or skills. You are able to lead a group. You are able to talk in public. But so maybe I can, uh, you know, promote you to a manager. Uh, also, we are very worried about knowledge management. I think that that's one of the, the key issues now. We have to be able to manage all knowledge in our organization in order to make decisions and to uh, improve our processes. So, one, this is another uh, possibility to um, manage knowledge that is obtained uh, in informal, uh, by informal learning activities. And here we have a concept that is, that is um, quite uh, positive because the internet, what to consider uh, social networks and so on, are helping us to make visible that kind of learning. I can publish in Twitter. I have learned, I don't know, how to do a pecha kucha because I have been in a conference last week doing it. So maybe someone, for someone is useful that. Okay. So the technology is beginning to make uh, these kind of things visible. So why not to use that technology? In fact, there are several initiatives on this sense, uh, such as the pod, Ecotech, well, I would like to put this out. Okay. Fairport, Microtech, EQF, that are trying to recognize and validate the experience, the informal learning, something that goes beyond the institutional uh, and formal learning that happens uh, in the university or higher education centers. Uh, there are also several ICT solutions proposing several European projects, but I think most of them are focusing how to um, measure, how to recognize, to define a model, to define. What we are thinking in this project is how to enable the user first to be conscious of what uh, he is doing in the informal context and also to start a dialogue with the people in the institution in order to promote, to uh, look for ways in which both can be better. Okay. Uh, well, this project is being closed in a closing today. Uh, here, in fact, you have several people from the trailer project now, uh, and today is a closing meeting. Um, we are finishing. Well, I am going to present very quickly some of the results and some of the, the main issues because the idea here is how to do that. Uh, The final project is an um, ICT multilateral project uh, funded by the European Commission. It incorporates uh, or the idea of the consciousness about the informal learning of the individuals. And uh, uh, what we have obtained, first a methodology to do, to do that, a technological system to support that kind of methodology. We have uh, carried out several pilots. And uh, we have um, also several uh, dissemination results. As technological background, well, 
we are going to use a methodology, but a methodology taking into account the The tools, a personal learning network, that is all the tools that I use to learn that are not necessarily uh, should be linked to an institution. And see that is a kind is the informal learning collector is a kind of gateway that which uh, which are going to uh, what is going to do is to gather the information and let you store to push it to a more uh, I don't know formal uh, place such as a portfolio. Okay, we have the portfolio here that is using this kind of interface from the ILC. And in both cases, we have an interaction with a competence scatter. Why? Because it's very useful that the user not only know, okay, I'm doing informal learning, but also said, okay, I'm doing informal learning, and I'm, I know I'm beginning to uh, achieve these competencies or I, I have this skill because of this uh, learning activity. Okay? So, the competence catalog was defined in order to, in the uh, ILC or in the portfolio, uh, uh, a classification of, of these kind of things. Um, the competence catalog and uh, the portfolio are also connected with an institutional system. Why? Because for the person in an institution is very responsible, for an institution is very useful if he or she can make decisions with the information that the users are publishing to the institution, not all the information, only that, uh, only that information that is being published for them. And finally, we have a report here, a report tool that uh, facilitates the uh, elaboration of reports in order to uh, this kind of activities have taken into account. The methodology is this. First, and very important, is identification and storage of uh, the informal learning activities, uh, awareness about what is happening, maybe a classification, not only, not, not always, because sometimes what you want to do is, okay, I have done this, this, and this, and I want to store it. Later I will, have, I, I will classify it, not now, okay? So we have this option, but not always, and uh, to store that information. Have you uh, ever, uh, I think so, um, ever uh, known about um, bookmarklet or something like that? It's a way in which you can store the links that you are visiting and provide additional information. This is something like that, maybe. First, I know I'm doing something informal, I'm going to add more information, and I'm going to classify it, taking into account uh, some competencies. Or add some tags, just to add some tags related with informal activity. That information is organized when I want through a portfolio. OK, I can organize, identify new learning activities, classify them, publish it for my friends or, or, or publish it for an institution. That is, you can publish it in different ways, with different showcases, uh, is, that is a kind of view for a specific public. And finally, we can analyze it. And when we are analyzing it, uh, we can make decisions about how this can influence the, the way in which my information is organized. If I maybe I need Maybe if I talk with my boss, he said to me, okay, you have to begin to learn more about this specific issue. So I can do it. So my organization and my learning activities can change. Also, uh, can change the formal learning activities. If uh, my boss detects that there is a lack for uh, learning in Java in a company, he said, okay, you need a, learning, uh, a Java course. Okay, so this can influence in the way in which uh, uh, informal, and in this case, include, uh, even formal learning activities are carried out. How to model this? Well, uh, I'm going to use uh, this kind of diagrams. They are BPMN diagrams. Camino has presented before something that uh, was used in also this kind of model. So I'm trying to, to describe some of the uh, main activities. Okay, the first one is the identification. Uh, you can wonder, um, a user play a game. He is using the browser and, the term, uh, and decide, decide, okay, I'm, I have learned this. So uh, he goes, push a button, and the activity is sent to the ILC. Okay? In the ILC, the activity is received, and maybe it could be in keyword, so I don't be worried about it. I'm sending things to the 
continuously to the IMC. And later, if the user decides, I can edit the activity. If I edit the activity, I can add extra information or not. I can provide more information now in the IOC or send it to the portfolio and when I have time enough, I can complete the, the information. Anyway, once we do this, we, we, do this um, we are going to store the activity. We are going to store the activity in a portfolio, which is the final uh, um, container of all these kind of evidences. Another possibility. Okay, now I have time. And what would uh, what what I would like to do? I would like to classify what I have been storing. In this case, we would like to manage activities in a portfolio. And the portfolio ask 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 us, what would you like to do with this information that you have here stored? Okay, I have. First, to say, uh, to, say um, to decide what to edit or what to do. Maybe I can organize it. How? I can organize it maybe in showcases. In example, I would like to have a showcase for the people in East Learn, in which I could store informal learning evidences about what is happening here. Okay? But I would like also, I can have another showcase for a business, and another showcase for an academic context. Okay? And in that, in that showcase, I can manage what to publish and what not. And I can export it, which is very possible. And I can classify it. That is, okay, I, I, before I have no time, and now I have it. So I'm going to say, this activity is linked to these uh, competencies, or this other, or this other, or I would like to define a competence because it's more uh, close to, well, maybe not a competence, to have a word to describe the activity because it's more close to what I'm doing, and it's not uh, previously in the stored in the, in the system. And also, I would like to publish. This is important, because if you say someone, OK, you have to say to your organization, no, 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 sorry. You are going to publish to your organization all the informal activities you are doing. People said, people said I'm not going to use this, this, this system, because I don't want to share information. Well, I, I can understand this, because all people is using Facebook, Resergate, I don't know who much more things, and I think you can say, uh, you can know a lot about what is happening uh, with these tools, but well, people is afraid of this, so we are providing them the possibility to publish this kind of activities in order to uh, uh, decide uh, yeah, if the institution considers uh, them important, and uh, to begin a dialogue with, with the person. Okay, so you have this. Okay, this is useful for the organization. I'm going to promote you. Okay. Or I, I would like that you achieve these other competencies in order to promote you. Finally, another example. In this case, is the HR manager or, I don't know, the people in charge of the institution that has uh, the necessity to know what is happening there. Okay, so uh, he or, uh, or she asks for a set of services that make able uh, making decisions. In this, in this case, we are considering a set of different kind of, uh, of uh, possibilities. In example, I can have competence information. Competence information about what is happening in all my organizations. Which kind of competencies they are adding, which are related to institutions, which are related to a more general catalog with a general set of competencies, and so on. Also, I can uh, maybe I, I, it's interesting for me to know which specific competencies has any user. Or maybe take it in, take it in, we can take it in a new way. Which user has a specific competence or a specific set of competencies? That's also important. Also, we have been using tax, and it's very useful to analyze tax. Well, it's something that is very useful, maybe not, but it's very common now. Okay, so uh, we are going to ask for task uh, the portfolio in order to gather information and to make decisions about it. And uh, finally, with all this information, we process the data. And we produce different kinds of services. And all these services are provided to the um, people in charge of the institution. Okay, okay, the people in charge of the institution open it and say, okay, I have all this information, all this information, I can make decisions about it. What is happening here? I know what is happening here. The good, uh, maybe the, the, the best uh, way to represent this is in this kind of diagrams because you can see all the different possibilities. And here, I'm not all. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, we are discussing some, some of the common uh, ways to use the tools, not all the tools. But this is an example about the, potion, the potentiality of this kind of diagrams in order to describe business processes. Okay. Um, finally, as conclusions, I, I would like to say that <coughs> informal learning is being increasingly uh, important and we have to take it into account. So, if we need to take it into account, we need projects, tools, Methodologies, ways to uh, make this informal learning visible and useful, both for the institutions and for the uh, learners, for employees, if you want. Uh, this methodology, we have defined a methodology to articulate uh, such a dialogue, and uh, we have tested it. We have tested it first with experts, uh, and with the experts, we detect some uh, breakdowns and we try to solve them and also uh, some of the problems, we, we solve them. And after that, we begin two pilots. One uh, oriented to the employees or the learners in the institution, and one in, uh, oriented to the uh, people in charge of the institutions, using the different parts of the system. Um, well, maybe if you want later, because this is a very long uh, discussion, we can talk about what they said. In general, the idea was good, but the problem maybe is that for students or learners and employees, they have no kind of things. I don't know. I, maybe I don't know why. Maybe we, our project is uh, complex because we are considering different tools and so on. But uh, uh, I think that the, the idea is that if, when we have done these pilots, you said to the user, do that, do this. Don't let. Um, you don't. You are not giving them the possibility to do it or not during a month. You are giving. Uh, teaching them how to use the tool, and they just said, okay, use it. Maybe this is not the usual form to do this. People in the world have no time to, to use this kind of system. You have to do a very attractive and simple system in order to, to facilitate this kind of, um, of activities. Uh, with regard to, to which uh, our managers, they were very happy, because uh, they are having some information that in other cases were not available. So uh, they were really, really happy and comfort comfortable with this kind of, of information. Also, another problem is that not always uh, the, the, the dialogue things. That is, I know what I want to know, but I'm not going to ask the student or the employee. So I, we, we should try to fix these kind of things. And finally, with the feedback, we can change, and I think we are going to change the BPM diagrams that we have used to model the methodology because there are uh, changes that can affect the way uh, in which uh, the activities are carried out in order to improve the, the system. So well, this is more or less what we are doing, but I'm not going to any questions you have.